Hello everyone and welcome to another Mac Pro upgrade video. This is the third upgrade video in uh, in a row, so that's absolutely crazy. Uh, this one is slightly different, um, slightly less extreme, but it'll be extremely uh, beneficial to me. Uh, hopefully interesting to watch as well. Maybe this hasn't been done on YouTube before. It may have. I, you know, I'm not saying it hasn't. I haven't looked, but you know, it's you know quite a strange upgrade. But anyway. Um, you can, you're probably looking at the title above and getting quite confused. So what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is try and explain to you now. I'm doing terribly explaining things today. I just can't get my words out. But hopefully you guys can follow me with this one. It won't be too long. Um, basically, I have my desk set up, and it's you know naturally like any desk set up, full of cables. As soon as I had do do bleh, as soon as I had two monitors and two computers running off of a KVM switch, I had so many more cables it made a crazy difference. Uh, I've got the router up here, so I've got all the ethernet cables, the phone cable. It's just a load of cables, not forgetting the power for all of this, you know, the power for three computers, the power for two monitors, all the external hard drives. It's a lot of cables. So I was thinking to myself the other day, I'm really not the kind of person that does this cable tidy stuff. I never have been. Um, and you know, I've said in the past that I want to do it, and that still stands. I really want to rearrange my desk and put all the cables neatly. Uh, but I thought, until I do that, what can I do to make it easier? Um, can I go a little bit further back the chain and address the issue? You know, I thought, can I get rid of some cables? Or can I get rid of um, certain lines that cables have to travel? And I came up with this amazing solution, and that's the fact that um, I don't have enough USB ports on the Mac Pro. So what have I done to solve that issue? Well, first off, I've got a terrible USB hub that I've had for about four years. It's not powered, and it's absolutely atrocious. If you plug four power-hungry devices into it, it just goes bleh and gives up. Um, it was good for when I, when I bought it. Um, it's a little silver one. You've probably seen it in my videos before. I bought it in Argos, I remember. I paid way too much money for it, but, you know, I, I just got my MacBook, and I was excited and everything, and I didn't have enough USB ports, you know, as soon as I bought my MacBook. Um, but anyway, um, I run that for some smaller USB things, including my iPods. And what I also do is daisy chain my Dell monitor USB ports. And I'm actually using the two USB ports in the bottom of my secondary Dell monitor and the two on the side um, as a USB hub and the two on the bottom of the other display. So that's a lot of USB ports. And um, it's making this sort of nest of cables on my desk, on the surface of my desk. Now, I don't really care about all those cables down on the floor. Nobody ever sees them. Of course, I know they're there, and the people that are OCD absolutely hate it. But I don't need this nest of cables on my desk. It's just stupid. So, if I can um, route all of the cables to the Mac Pro itself, I can put everything behind the desk straight down. Now, I realise that most of the surface cabling was USB. So if I can get some more USB ports in the Mac Pro, then absolutely fantastic. I'll have more cables going to the Mac Pro, but that's not an issue, because the Mac Pro itself and the speaker next to it hides all the cables. So I wanted four more USB ports in the back of the Mac Pro. So naturally I began looking for a USB 2.0 PCI card. And um, I did this, um, you know, I've had USB 2.0 cards in my G4s and whatnot in the past. Um, so I started looking, and I was just gobsmacked at the price of them for Mac Pros. It was crazy. I could get some dodgy ones on eBay that were like 3 dollars that said that they were compatible with OS X, but I wasn't going to take that risk. That's just stupid. So I paid six, £16.50 for one of these. And I think this is a really good price. This is a USB card with two USB ports on it. But as you can see by the blue, hopefully you can see that colour blue, this is a USB 3.0 card, which is amazing. It's tiny, it's very lightweight, and it's USB 3.0. It came with this driver disc, because this isn't a, a, an official Mac part. Um, it came with a driver disc. You can just see a 3.0 driver there, and it says, yeah, driver at the bottom. And uh, it's just from that Mac place um, on eBay that are from Hong Kong, but they're really good, really good service. And they do also, they flash all graphics cards and everything. They offer fantastic warranties. So I thought, hey, why not? I'm gonna go with one of these. Now I didn't just go with one because I wanted four USB ports. I went with two. 
But after I ordered them, I thought, oh no, I'm taking up two PCI slots with just USB stuff. But guys, at this point in time, it really doesn't matter to me. Simply because, um, I don't use my PCI slots for anything else. I've got my graphics card and that's it. So, I've got plenty of slots free for stuff like this, and if I ever need all the slots in the future for something, then of course, things like this will have to uh, be sacrificed. But, um, what I'm going to do is just give you a closer look at the card on the desk very briefly, and then we're going to install the driver. I think it's a good idea to install the driver before we install the hardware. So, um, USB 3.0 card, and of course, another advantage to having a USB 3.0 card, again, I didn't want a 3.0 card, you know, I didn't have any specific desire for it, but it was just generally cheaper. £16.50 each, absolutely fantastic, free postage, and um, they came really quickly, considering it was Hong Kong, and I think that's fantastic, and if I do get any USB 3.0 devices in the future, I'll barely utilise the speed. And of course, these cards are backward compatible with 2.0 and 1.1 as well, so that's perfect for all the devices that I have. Anyway, that was a bit of a math thought. What we're going to do now is um, just have a little angle on the desk and I'm going to show you a little closer look at these cards because it's quite interesting. Okay, so we might as well unwrap one of these cards on camera. I think that'll be fairly fun. Um, let's just check that you can get a decent little viewing angle of this. It just comes in these nice little bags that you tend to uh, get PCI stuff in. Sellotape down. And it's dead simple, you literally just get the driver disc, this is just like the other one, and you get the card itself. So a closer look at this then, you can see very, very simple. Here's the PCI interface on the side of course, and then you have the two 3.0 slots, very little card, very lightweight. So I've got two of these bad boys, and they're both going in the Mac Pro. Fantastic, they're both identical units as well, and I like that kind of thing, it's going to sit in the back and look like that. Absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to get this organisation underway. So let's pop in the absolutely tiny uh, driver disc. I like to say the GameCube game of <laughs> driver discs. There's my tray looking very dusty. Brilliant stuff. There it goes. And let's close her up. So it turns out, guys, that there was only Windows drivers on that CD. I thought it was provided by the people that um, modified the card, because the description said it was a modified card. I um, immediately assumed that that disc was um, for Mac, you know, to make it work with Mac. But I guess, uh, guess you don't need any drivers, so it's strange to know why they included them. And uh, yeah, so there was just Windows... Uh, Vista and Windows 7, uh, 32 and 64 drivers on there. So um, simple, I guess I don't have to install anything. That's pretty cool. So um, I'm going to get you a better angle now. Hopefully it will, the lighting will be okay. And we're going to uh, stick these cards in. Well, everyone, it's pretty dark in there, but hopefully you guys can sort of see. I've never undone this bracket, personally, but these screws don't appear to be tight at all. Ah, fantastic, they don't come out all the way. Well, hey, that makes life so much easier. I love brackets like this. Apple, perfect design. All right, let's take these hard drive, well, this hard drive kit out to make it a little bit easier. Okay, we already had a missing slot, so that makes it handy. We will just literally pop in these cards. Um, we'll do the top one first. I'm really annoyed at the fact that you can't see very much. Hang on a second. Well, hey, that's a bit better. Hopefully I don't block too much of my arms. I usually do in my upgrade videos. I say I'll probably be blocking this with my arm and then I look back at the video and I realize, man, I've really been blocking it with my arm. <laughs> there we go, there's one. We'll check that it's stable in a minute. Of course, you don't screw these in on the Mac Pro. You just use that bracket. So uh, before you put that bracket on, it's quite hard to tell if you put it all the way in the slot. Sorry, I'm blocking the view, guys. I really am sorry. Way well, hey, magnificent. Let's take a look at the back. Looking good in the back, guys. It really is, actually. We need to make sure that the cards are definitely pushed up 
in their slots when it comes to putting that cover back on. Let's just give them an extra little shove. Ah, that bottom one needing an extra little push. Perfect. Now then, let's resituate. Let's have a look at that frame. Uh, the joys of making YouTube videos in the night and with a broken tripod. I don't think this is the original Mac Pro, Pro slot cover because it's not fitting very well. Let's try one of the other ones. I think they're all the same. Although this could be original, it's just... There you go, that's much better. That fits a lot better actually. Okay, so you've got two USB 3.0 cards in there. Let's put this guy back. We'll just finger tighten the screws again. No point tightening them up there any more than that. There you have it guys, they're both installed. Um, pretty straight. Now I'm looking at it again, I can see that they're not totally straight, but kind of hard to do with that bracket and that empty slot back above the graphics card kept jumping out, so I assume it's not an original one. A little bit too tin pot to be an original one, but if you look at the back here, you can hopefully see through the mess. There you go. Four USB 3.0 ports. That is awesome. So what I'm going to do now is wire up some devices, going to put my hard disks back in, well, my hard disk and my empty bay, and uh, I'm going to fire it up and uh, see if the cards work. Here's that damn thing, and listen to this. Bits of broken stuff. Probably the casing, but the cable's nearly ripped out of it. And the cable always annoyed me because it was really short. <laughs> I remember putting it on a USB extension when I had my old setup. But anyway, that is no more. And check this out. We're loaded up in the back with one to spare. Kick ass. And look, there's one to spare down in the system as well. Which uh, will be occupied with this. But anyway, I'm going to sort out the cable mess, get everything back in order, we're going to fire it up and see if it works. Okay, so it's been a very long time since the last bit of the video you saw, it's been a good two weeks. Um, I'll explain in my next video what the hell's happened. But basically, to stick with the topic in this upgrade video, this disc was the Windows drivers, um, so obviously... Um, it was the wrong drivers, blah blah blah. But then I looked at the emails, and they after you buy the after you buy the USB 3.0 card, they send you the drivers. So um, I'll just show them to you now. Basically, you have uh, pretty straightforward installation instructions, and then these two files here. And um, I've read the instructions, and I understand it. So basically, what I'm going to do is go ahead and do what it says now. I've got to reboot and repair my permissions and stuff. It recommends. So I will do all of that, and then we'll test out the USB 3.0 card. Of course, I can't test out any USB 3.0 devices because I don't have any. But um, we'll test out. We'll test it out with USB 2.0. Okay, so I've repaired my disk permissions, but I'm not going to um, restart yet because I'm converting uh, quite a few video files at the moment, so I will uh, resume this after dinner. Um, it's a shame that you've got to reboot, really, but you probably don't have to. I'm just going to follow the instructions because I don't want it to go wrong. Uh, it's already um, a dodgy process, of course, because these aren't official Mac cards, but it is so worth it because I've got four extra ports and also uh, future compatibility with USB 3.0 devices. So all we have to do, guys, is drop this file into here and hit install and then type in our password. Let's hit OK. Install succeeded. Awesome. And now it says reboot again and I should be able to use the card. That is wicked. So what I'm going to do is shut down. And I'm going to plug in um, some devices to the cards and see what they do. I have my pen drive connected to the back of the Mac just for test purposes. And uh, what do you know? It works. Pen drive, and there's all my files. Perfect. I couldn't ask for more. Uh, drivers installed blissfully, blissfully. Well, it wasn't like drivers. It was almost like installing a crack, to tell you the truth. But anyway, um, absolutely fantastic. No complaints. Um, they don't need to include the disks, but the pretty cool thing is, um, I guess these could still work in Windows, because I have the driver disks. 
who knows, that looks almost black on the camera, purpley black, but it's actually quite a bright blue in real life. But anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video, guys. Very stretched out, massive delay between uh, this part and the last part. Same video for you guys, but there has been a delay in my videos, and all will be explained in the next video. So thanks very much for watching yet another Mac Pro upgrade video, and uh, this will probably be the last one for a while, because I'm quite happy with the way the system's running. I do need a new video card, but price is stopping me from doing that at the moment. So again, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you in the next video.